I don't blame you, Ayushman. I don't. If the lifetime collection of an action hero is 16 crores and you are on the verge of doing a 42 crore weekend with a movie like Dream Girl 2, I don't blame you. Imagine creating a niche for yourself in an incestuous and guarded industry as an outsider by doing movies that talk about taboo subjects but are presented in a delightfully commercial manner. So much so that it translates to the masses. That is what Ayushman Khurana developed really early on in his film career. Termed as Mr. ROI, Ayushman could do nothing wrong before the pandemic and you personally connected to his rise in the industry. The man had the ability to make a sensitive and gritty subject like that in Article 15 be as commercially viable as a slick and inventive thriller like Andhadun. But what happens when those same creative choices just seem to not click post the pandemic? That same touch and seamless connection with the audience just goes missing. You do as the situation demands. You do a sequel of a movie that has nothing to do with the first part, has enough recall value that people get hyped for it, and you present probably your most generic film, completely opposite to your otherwise creative choices. But can I blame you? Can I really blame you we failed you when you released an action hero? I don't. Ayushman sab logo ko karna padta hai. And I don't blame you, but we've got a job to do. So here, let's talk about Dream Girl 2, a movie, as I previously said, that has nothing to do with the first film. Focuses on Karmveer Singh, played by Ayushman, who lives with his father, Jagjit, played by Anu Kapoor. The duo is debt-ridden and are constantly visited and threatened by creditors. And in order to become worthy of Pari, played by Ananya Pandey, Karam has to make sure he acquires at least 25 lakhs in his bank account. His pursuit includes bar dancing and becoming the bahu of a family that wants their son to get out of depression and get married. The confusion that takes place as Karam becomes Pooja is basically the premise of this situational comedy. Here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the film so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it in theatres or not. The Good Ayushman Khurana Dedication Ayushman really does everything for this role. He cross-dresses, dances with ferocious energy and grace, he runs around with oranges to adjust his breasts, he role-plays as a woman to get out of debt, he hits on everything that moves to get out of trouble, and it's all the signs of an actor just desperate to land the punchlines of an otherwise stale film. You really have to give it to Ayushman for doing everything to become convincing as Karam and Pooja. You want him to dance at a bar unabashedly, he does it. You want him to hit on Vijay Raz and Seema Pawa while taking turns to change in the washroom, he will do it with such sincerity that the veteran actors will feel 20 years younger. You want him to flirt on the phone with our poor Meena from Kota Factory, he will do it with so much conviction that he will put his mother's eye surgery on hold. Most of the gags delivered by him are the only funny parts of the movie. Lecturing someone ki rodis ka task de rahe ho kya? Calling Vijay Raz kamzor bappi lehri or saying sanitizer nahi hu ki sabko de raha hai. He really has all the gems of the film, and they are few and far between. Ayushman really gives his heart and soul to the film and makes sure that at least his portrayal of Pooja does not border on just being crass, but a lure to highlight the perverse ways of men ready to fight, shout and be at each other's throat the moment they are given the slightest attention from the opposite sex. It's however the bland writing that really lets this film down, failing in comparison to the gags in the first film, and more importantly, takes the shape of comedy nights with Kapil just without Sunil Grover in the cast, and with most of the gags being aimed at the character's physical traits or gender. I cackled twice with Legends. There were two scenes where I definitely thought that only legends like Vijay Raz and Seema Pawa can elevate such pedestrian writing. Vijay Raz asks Ayushman ki tumhare phone ka wazan kya hai? He replies, yahi kuch 200-300 gram. He replies, Seema Pava cross-eyed comparing her eyes to that of Rekha also extracted many laughs in the theatre. The rest of it, however, just doesn't stick. The Underwhelming Aspects TikTok humor. The film has a packed ensemble cast and the storyline is paper thin. The film is basically a bunch of situational gags that are lined up together with as many comedic stars as possible and each dialogue is delivered with a sound effect that will put TikTok creators to shame. <laughs> What's interesting is that most of the cast members also have absurd hair colour and clothes that will make you reminisce about the golden age of TikTok before the pandemic where individuals like this guy were at the peak of popularity. I mean, you've got Ananya Pandey playing a lawyer who is supposed to be bright who comes up with a solution for her boyfriend to acquire money. 
शी सेल्स मैंने सुना है कि एम एफ हुसैन घोड़ा पेंट करके लाखों में बेच देता है मैंने तो पंद्रह बीस घोड़े पेंट किए हैं पंद्रह बीस लाख तो मिल ही जाएंगे बाई द वे द कास्टिंग ऑफ अनन्या पांडे ओवर नसरत बरूचा मेक्स नो सेंस इज इंट इट ऑल्सो फनी ऑन हाउ वेन फ्रेंचाइज बिकम पॉपुलर एंड दी इंस्टॉलमेंट इंक्रीज The main lead always stays the same, but the female leads are changed without even thinking about it. That's some food for thought. Gags like Sakina kya Japani naam hai, a sister being offered for marriage from a coma as taazi taazi nikal ke aayi hai. Ananya comes to a funeral where everyone is wearing white and there is a dead body right in the center and she asks, "Death ho gayi kya?" Ayushman upon experiencing injustice says he doesn't hit women. Rajpal Yadav says, "Belt se to mar hi sakte ho." Most of the gags are seriously like TikTok edits. Songs are used as background music, not like the self-aware Bala or the homage to vintage romance like Rocky or Rani. Just low-effort gags with random songs in the background as men ogle at women. Celebrity names like Shilpa Shetty Mangi or Sunil Shetty mil gaya, and memes like "Bakht badal diya, jazbat badal diye" are all utilized as creative gags that will give Farhat Samji insecurity. Wasted Legends. The film has a list of known and credible actors that are terribly wasted in one unfunny gag after the other. Vijay Raj plays a bar owner and he is mostly ogling at Pooja. He constantly bickers with his soon to be ex-wife Seema Pawa and fat shames her ki ice cream ki aadat nahi gayi. Seema Pawa is wasted in mostly the entire film that is aimed at shaming her appearance, age or weight. Is this the reason for the success of the film also that this is the low hanging fruit comedy we like how relatives meet us and the first thing that they point out are our physical insecurities ki kitni kali ho gayi hai kitna mota ho gaya hai are these the level of jokes that transmit the best to the masses Parish Rawal is probably in his least funny role as he constantly is frustrated at the developments around him and barely has any punch lines to be memorable Rajpal Yadav just wears absurd clothes and is reacting to his surroundings and Asrani is barely present in the film Anu Kapoor licks his lips and tado Seema Pawa and that's the most of his comedic prowess explored in this film an actor who is otherwise hilarious in films like Vicky Donner and Jolly LLB2 is wasted here it really tells you on how we don't really know how to utilize some of our most legendary actors who are reduced to play caricatures in films intention of the first part versus the second At least the intention of the first film was to create a commentary on loneliness and how slowly and steadily we are becoming disconnected as communities and more insular as the time goes. There is no commentary in the second part and I'm not saying it's necessary for a movie. The problem is it's conflicted in what it wants to be. When it tries to be serious and makes you want to care about Karam and Pari, you barely feel anything because they don't even share too many scenes together. The film is just one khichdi gag after the other and I guess that's the flavor now. One throwaway joke one confusing situation and roam the plot around that confusion and while i appreciate ayushman's dedication to absolutely commit to the role it really is a huge come down in quality from an action hero to this film but can you really blame him the business of dream girl 2 is just on the weekend projected to surpass the lifetime collection of some of his recent films i root for you ayushman and i get why you did dream girl 2 But don't forget about the several gems you gave us along the way. Why the audience respected your choices? Why you developed a huge fan base? Just all in the pursuit of hollow box office success will be a sad sight to witness. But again as I said, I don't blame you at all.